And now, this week's edition of Big Face with your host, Samantha Jane Tilton. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Face. I'm your host, Sammy Jane Tilton, and my guest today, Joey Ozan. <laughs> That was, I'm that, like, was, I, that was like you were like uh, I was like I was like am I gonna get this right yeah no it's it's all good it's yeah it's like Roseanne so it's oh I know and yeah, even yeah. every oh, time I tried oh, to yeah. oh Zan, every a. time I tried to knock off the r I was like I was like it still doesn't feel right no the a the a throws everybody off off they're like oh, oh, I know and it's so and it's so beautifully spelled which you guys will see in the description so right. Joey is here he's a Texas-born actor and singer and guest of ours today how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm feeling good. It's a beautiful Saturday. I was just out yeah, enjoying the weather and looking at all the leaves on my on my yard that I'm gonna have to rake later after this. So that's what <laughs> I know. So you were just saying you're like, so on the third floor. So Joey started to show me something. I was like, nah, nah, nah. Like, wait a sec, show us on the pod. Show yeah. us your setup right now. So basically, I, I was down in the basement. Um, I, I'm in Jersey, so I'm blessed that we have a house. I got to have a house because I got three kids, so we need space. Um, so I was down in the basement. I had a real kind of janky looking uh, setup down there, but yeah. I have my box lights, you know, my box lamps. And so right now I'm, I'm all the way up on the third floor in my basement. So I got like this whole thing going on. I don't even know if I can turn everything. I was like, even just seeing up like all the insulation, like it's all the insulation. If I turn you upside down, yeah, see, you can actually Dude. See, there's the box lamps, right? That's awesome. There, I'm getting oh, you, you like, got a weird setup. I'm, loo I'm losing my, my setup now. <laughs> all I right, got, so you guys I get got, the gist. <laughs> I got more wires back here than NASA going on, so it's like, <laughs> but you would never guess the way I got it set up here. So, anyway, I, so it's so simple. Attic. Yeah, yeah, Shay Ozan in the attic. This is where I do all of my uh, my self tapes and stuff like that. And so um, it's it's fairly quiet. It's a little uh, warm today for whatever reason. It's almost the end of October, but it's still like seventy degrees. So um, well, up there on the third floor, like it's yeah, always it's warm. Like insulation up here, but it's quiet, which is nice. You know, the kids, really nice. down, three kids, you got to get some quiet somewhere. I need, I need to go somewhere. So the attic is where Daddy goes to escape <laughs> awesome do you do voiceover stuff there because with all the i do yeah, yeah so i got my little i got my little condenser mic here uh that i use and then yeah. i usually use like garage band i actually just you know edit everything and then send yep. it off to my agent and then they submit it that's awesome you yeah gotta do, you gotta do right you do what you gotta do and you that's the thing is i was i was uh like uh like the guest on like a lunch panel thing. And like, so the, I was the industry person and like, everyone's like, so I should spend all the money and do the big thing. And I'm like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of money. You get this, you get that, you can figure out, like, you just, you gotta be creative. You gotta figure yeah, it out, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? I mean, you can, you know, splurge and, and, yeah. and, and get like an, a, an actual analog setup. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of people just use uh, USB cause it just plugs right into your laptop, you know, which yeah. is easy. And nowadays they have so many programs that you can use to tweak your voice yep. and uh, and just the mics, you know, back in the day when I first started doing voiceovers, the even the like the USB condenser mics were pretty expensive because they were fairly a new game compared right, exactly. to, the you know, the old analog stuff. Um, but now you can get your really reasonable mic, um, you know, for for, you know, under 100 bucks and it sounds golden. And you sound great and you can compete with these other guys that have been doing it for a while, you know? It's it's like everything, when there's a new technology, as soon as it comes out, like it's so insanely expensive, but yeah. now we live in a time where new stuff is coming out constantly that it just, it's crazy. Yeah. You can get stuff really cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you know, you can come up with a pretty good setup for, you know, depending on what, what you're doing. I mean, nowadays, yeah. since COVID hit, of course, you have people doing VOs, basically sessions from home, you know, yep. and they're using Source Connect and that sort of thing yep. um, to patch you right into the studio, wherever it may be in the city or it may be across exactly. country. So, um, but yeah, you know, you got your good mic, um, you can do wonders, so. Yeah. How is, speaking about working during quarantine and stuff, how's it been for you? I feel like you've been, you know uh, it's, you've it's been moving been okay. and shaking. Yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 been okay. I mean, I, I'm definitely beginning um, a, quite a bit of auditions, which is which is nice. My my manager keeps me busy. Um, That's great. I actually, 
got to work back in July um, in, on location in Detroit. I, I saw that and I was yeah, like, yeah. nice. So it, was, well- it was crazy because it was something I had actually booked right before, basically when like COVID really hit and they were like, okay, time to shut down the country or, you know, the state, I guess, because yeah. they kind of left it to the states to do what they want. I know. <laughs> Um, I know. won't go into I know. that right yeah, now. Yeah, we won't. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> but <Right> basically, the <laughs> they, sh- they just said, you know what, we're going to put it on hold. Um, and it was for a really cool project. Um, I'm trying to trying to remember if I signed the NDA or not. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> anyway, you could speak it's, about it's it in a, in a vague manner. Yeah, I, I can I can probably tell you what it, what it is. Yeah. It's basically. Um, uh, a sci-fi slash psychological thriller kind of a thing. It, it's nice. Um, I basically played this uh, character who belongs to, we actually shot in Detroit. So that's where this all takes place. The story takes okay. place. And it's a uh, division of the Detroit police department that um, deals with um, incarnate spirits, basically that go, huh. that go rogue. So basically you're de- dealing with all these like bad ghosts that are going around hurting the population, right? They're, they're like causing havoc and whatnot and, and people huh. are getting hurt. So we go in and extract these spirits from like abandoned buildings or someone's home or whatever. But anyway, so I played the lead, which was really cool. Um, and I got to go to Detroit, which I hadn't been in like, I think I was doing like a children's, theater tour like 15, wow. 15 years wow. ago. So Detroit was totally downtown Detroit was totally different back in the day. And now it's pretty vibrant. It's cool. I mean it was still kind of slow and quiet because of yeah. obviously all the, the time. The yeah. Down. But it was cool. So I was there for about a week. Uh and uh yeah got to shoot in some really cool old spaces oh, in Detroit that awesome. were abandoned. So that was fitting for the that the was story. pretty fitting. So yeah <laughs> it's like you- uh, it, it, <laughs> did that chair just move like you know it was i was gonna was, say was it a little scary it was like, like realistic that's to say it was because there unfortunately are a lot of uh abandoned factories and buildings and stuff like that in hotels yeah. uh that that's which where we shot um in detroit oh, so but it was it was really cool people in detroit are actually really nice cool people um the production company that i worked with uh, eightfold they killed it they were awesome and so oh, that's awesome. yeah it, you know but anyway um so work you know work has been here and there um but auditions there are you know things are starting to happen again luckily yeah you know, things are starting it's, to pop again commercially cr- too not just yes it, so you know I, it's so crazy because um well first of all i, I don't want to jump past that when when do you think we'll be able to see you in that project Ooh, do you have any, okay, any so- idea so believe that's it or always not, a question, I, I right? Wrapped, I wrapped the end of July. I have not yeah. seen a frame, <laughs> which I like they're it. really being very secretive. Like yeah. it's a it's a um a uh, girlfriend and boyfriend uh, writer director team. Oh wow! Uh, and they're actually they they do a lot of cool work. They're from L.A. and they the crazy thing, man, it's like you you. I remember like we obviously know each other from acting class from Anthony yeah. Apeson, right? And so Anthony was always like, work begets work. Like, you know, g- good work begets work. Yeah. And so they actually saw an episode that I did of Rami, right? Really? They saw me in that and I don't have it wasn't like a it was a good decent scene. Yeah. You know, I play like a a Lyft driver or something like that. And <laughs> being myself and being chatty and talking. And so they saw that and they reached out to my manager solely on that. Like didn't see anything else. And they were like, hey, we're really, really interested in Joy reading for this role for this new, basically it's a um, a series. They want to write yeah. it as a series. Their last series got bought by Amazon. So they're, you know, they're repped. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing you know, stuff, they're, yeah. They're, real, they're the real deal. So for them to just kind of come out of the blue and say hey we want joy to read for this and i read and uh they liked me and they were like yeah you are you're our guy and so you just never know is my my point what you do you know it wasn't a major role it, you know it was, it was like a co-star role yeah but i had fun i did my thing with it and i made an impression dude for a congratulations that's awesome Thank that's you. really really awesome and like and for those of you watching or listening like 
exactly what Joey said. You just never know. There are no like small roles. There are no, uh, it was a lot of people, a lot of times actors or people say it was, oh, it was just this. And I'm, I always like, I'm like, it wasn't just yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. It was this because you just never know. You yeah, never yeah. know. People you downplay, people tend to downplay their under fives and their co-stars because yeah. they're like, oh, you know, I didn't have a lot of lines or I wasn't that, you know, that instrumental. Yeah the storyline or whatever but yeah. you know the thing is is every piece is needed you know every role is needed yeah. to make the story work and you just never know how you're going to shine and, and somebody mm -hmm. will take notice of that and yeah so, you know and there's a lot of people that you beat out that didn't get to play that small role right and so you should really be grateful <laughs> and be <laughs> like hey I get to do what I love and uh, exactly and, you know and get the to I don't know. You never know. Make yeah, you, you never. You. So you, it's an opportunity. That opportunity can lead to another opportunity. Yep, that's uh, well put. Yeah, absolutely. So this, so that's awesome. Okay, so we haven't seen that yet. So now, it, it'll, you know, know what? I'm yeah. going. So I was saying I haven't seen a frame, but I'm going to. Yeah. Hopefully, they they said they will have everything because there's a lot of uh, uh post effects because yes. we're dealing with ghosts so there's stuff flying around there's stuff so like awesome blowing up there's you know lasers and lights and all kinds of so they they've been diligently putting yeah. all the editing and tweaking in the post and all this stuff to really make it tight so i get to see it next week so i'm excited Sweet. Just to, to see what you know and it was weird because as an actor who's kind of gone up the the chain from yeah uh background you know when i first yeah. started I, was, I, I did background for um um flight of the concords right back like wow. back, back in the day you know which was like an awesome show and i was just like happy to just be on set and then that background became like a featured like background because i want to be in one of the videos that they yeah. that they did uh the song was um hurt feelings so if you don't know flight of the concords Go look it up on YouTube. Go look up it's Fly awesome. the Concord Hurt Feelings, it's, which is a hilarious song. And I'm in the video and I play like this rapper. Oh, I have to watch this. One life. of the three rapper guys, but we're dressed in like, you know, which totally makes sense. We're dressed up in like scuba diving suits and gold chains. I, I don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, I but, you know, but I just, you kind of work your way up. So, you know, you, you do your background, you do your five and unders, you do your co-star, your guest star. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this was like the, really the first time I was like the lead of a, like a pilot basically, you know? Um, so it was, it was a cool experience, but I didn't get to see one frame because I was always <laughs> on set. Like yeah. I was doing stuff and I wasn't used to that. I was used to like chilling and, you know, I'm a guest star, cool, you know, my <laughs> Oh, I got it. Oh, I can eat this, uh, you know, bagel. <laughs> you know, I got time. Crafty looks I, nice right now. <laughs> I got a couple of hours till my scene comes up, but like, I didn't have that time. I didn't have, I was literally like, no. lines, you know, going over lines and then, okay, Joey, next scene. Okay, this is Joey, next scene, next scene. It's just like, ah, you know, so it's, it's cool. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But it's a lot of work. You got to really be like ready. To, to be a, a, a series regular or a lead yeah. or whatever. It's, you know, it's cause a lot's on, on you too. So, yes. you know. I've had a couple couple of my guests on my shows that are working actors and, you know, like leads and things like that. Yeah. Uh, they're like, it is not glamorous. Like, <laughs> they're like, it is, it is that, rough, that comes man. Later. Like, that that yeah. comes later when you're doing like the Q and A's and you're, exactly. you're doing some press stuff or, you know, a screening or something like that. That's, that's when it, it's the fun, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's, it's, you know, such if you a love it, to it's, do it. Yeah. If you yes. love it, if you, you love it, it's hang in there to where you get to that point and then you're glad you're like, damn, I'm, I'm doing it. You know, I'm really doing some meaty stuff and, and you relish in it and you're thankful, you're grateful that, that you get to do it. So even though it's not easy, it's not tough. You do get yeah. usually pushed to the front of the line when it comes to, to catering, when it comes to lunch. They're like, oh, yes. no, look, Joey's got to eat. Joey's got to <laughs> replenish <laughs> that energy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was so funny. I was watching that. Um, the perks. Uh, the uh, the perks exactly. The perks, what was it? Yeah. Uh, uh, the movies that made us. Um, have you seen that on Netflix? Like the toys that made us, the movies that made us. One of them was Home Alone, okay. and uh, and they were saying like, uh, oh my gosh, was it the director? Uh, 
I forgot who it was, but that, or it was one of the, like assistant director and they kept scheduling Joe Pesci for like early call times, like six in the morning. And Joe Pesci was like, like, it. like he that. wanted to golf early in the morning. He would not be caught there. I think it was either eight or 9 a.m. Like he like would not do it. And right. I was like, dude, to be at that level, to be yeah, like, no, nah, I'm going like, golfing. You know <laughs> I got a, I got a golf, I got a golf round. You know, I got a knockout before I come to set. Yeah, he was just like, nah, six o'clock doesn't work for me. And I was Early. like, I was like that's, yeah. it's, it's like as an actor, that's like that's that's messed up because you know we, you do what you're, you know, you do what yeah. it's after you. Well, but I'm like, been, at some he's point, he's been doing it. Look, he's been doing it for I know. a long time, and I'm sure there were plenty of, of days, you know, that he woke up at five a.m., six a.m., um, <sighs> and so he's like, look, I pay yeah. my dues, and. Uh I'm Joe Pesci. So yes, and, I'm gonna... right. Well earned, buddy. Well earned. Right, right. So we let Joe Pesci come in whenever the hell he wants to come in. Exactly. Know? Just stroll on in. We'll we'll start shooting around you. Whatever. That's that's how it is. You know, I don't know if I want to get to that level. You know, but yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's all. How good. how long have you been doing this now? Woo. Uh. Well, the the um the TV and film stuff. I guess I kind of started doing in since 04 so okay. so it's it's that's hard to believe it's been like yeah like Crazy, 16 right? 17 years or something like that um but like acting stage wise and and singing like I went to school in in New Orleans I went to uh, Loyola University um I swear to god because I, I like even just like your the way you speak like you're from Texas, but I was like, there's this like this New Orleans thing yeah, in the way I, that you speak. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is the majority of my family or like almost all of my family on my dad and my mom's side, they're actually all from Louisiana. So, but back in the day, That's, my grandfather it. and whoever else decided, hey, let's go farm in Texas or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that so, accent goes, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So most people, they do hear um kind of a a, a, a cajun or a creole you know I, we say louisiana because it just you know it's all kind of the same uh i mean if you go to like a family reunion yeah my family's like hey boy what you say over there? <laughs> you know <I'm> like, <laughs> we'll bring that bill and we're going down you okay y'all say and you're like oh, okay uncle okay Nick, yeah whatever you say there uncle boudreau so you know whatever so, oh, so but going, it's funny when i'm in texas when i'm actually at home and I'm hanging with my friends. My draw does tend tend to come out a little bit more, you know. It's, and I slow down and I kind of chew on my words, and it's cool. But in New Orleans, it's kind of yeah. like, hey, y'all, what you what, what you know about that boy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's a, it's kind of sing songy, and you know. So I went to school there, studied it's so, music. It's so interesting, actually. yeah. So I'm a musician. You did study. I'm a singer first. So I believe it or not, uh, I'm a, I actually studied opera when I was at Loyola. So I was a, I wow. had a scholarship to, to sing opera and I, I wasn't like an opera buff or, or anything like that. I sang, you know, some classical choral stuff. I was like kind of a, a choir guy in middle school and in high yeah. school. And we would sing, you know, some classical stuff, but I wasn't like trying to do Pavarotti or you know, yeah. Placido Flamingo, Flamingo or anything like yeah. that. I was just, I just appreciated good music. And so I was hmm. asked when I went for my interview, you know, are you a singer? And I was like, yeah. And like, oh, you should audition for the school of music. And I wound up getting like almost a full ride to sing opera, which was hilarious. That's Cause amazing. I was trying to be a gangster rapper in high school. <laughs> and everybody's like, man, you can't sing no opera, man. What are you talking about, man? So I it was kind of, it was kind of crazy, but the acting, you know, I did a little bit of stage acting and uh but i was i was a singer i was like my my dream was to come to new york and do broadway and you know and then little little did i know i was going to be doing you know tya bus and truck tours you know my first <laughs> three, three or four years you know singing uh so to four-year-olds so it's, wow all right it's nuts so like you just never know by it's it's funny because like you'll hear like somebody that's just like little mousy kind of person they speak real low yeah. and then like the voice they have in them you just never know when somebody is musical you have no idea yeah, until yeah. they open up their mouth and a couple things one i want to hear you sing <laughs> mm. i won't okay. make you but i would no, love no, I to just hear mind. you i don't mind it, the thing is i don't i don't really sing as much opera yeah 
as I as I used to because I just the, when I go in for auditions, it's it's usually you know something contemporary, right? Um, or I you know back in the day, like way back in the day, yeah, I auditioned for uh, In the Heights, you know, because I had that yeah. rap thing going on, and uh -huh. most people see me and they're like, ah, he's Puerto Rican, he's you know Dominican or whatever, yeah. and I'm I'm not, you know, I'm What's not. Your, what is your nationality? So I'm I'm very mixed, as I said before, my family's from me from Louisiana. So yeah, we're Creole. So we're like a French Creole. Yeah. So, or Louisiana Creole, cause there's Haitian Creole, there's right. Cuban Creole. Like there's a, you know, just a mix of basically it's like French, um, uh, Native American. So my, mm. I think my great grandfather was like half Choctaw Indian, which was like a Louisiana, Mississippi swamp Indian or something like that. Right. Yeah. And then, and then of course I got a little, I got a little bit of brother in me. So I'm, I'm yeah. French. I used to tell people I'm FBI, I'm French, <laughs> black, and I don't know the rest. And so it was, it was just so much, so much stuff. Cause they're like, oh, you could have That's some great. German in you and you could have uh, some Italian in you. So my parents are like, they did the 23 and me. I was like, gonna say, did you do that? Yeah. I haven't done it yet. I should though. I totally should. My mom apparently has like 21% British in her. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, wait, what? Like I know. British? And there's, you know, slivers of German and, you know, I think everybody has like some sort of group from Africa in them yes, somewhere. Yes, I do. Yeah. Like everybody does, I think, you know. Yeah. But, so I don't know percentage wise exactly what I have going on, but uh, on paper, I'm, I'm a brother. So I know yeah, back in, in, that's in, <laughs> in 74, you know, it's, it was crazy because in the hospitals back even in the 70s, they, yeah. they put negro on in, at least in texas which is crazy man that that it's so that, it crazy wasn't that long ago that was and not that long African ago african american they didn't put black it literally says negro on my birth certificate and because i'm i know i don't look my age thank you god uh, yeah but, you so don't i don't know exactly how old you are but i know you don't yeah, look yeah. your age so i made 46 this this past year so in june so i'm just you know, that. up in my omega threes yeah know, so it, and my, my, you know, I'm not hitting the Geritol yet. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Look, man, you got it. All you could do is, right. You could take the best care of yourself that yeah, you yeah. can. And then the rest is genetics. Yeah. Yeah. My parents like hooked me up big time. So I think it might be some of that native American blood maybe and whatever yeah. else I got going on. So, um, but yeah. So you should do the, I mean, if you want to do the 23 me, you know, what's crazy is that my dad um, didn't, he grew up, he never knew he was adopted. And it wasn't until after his parents had already passed mm. that he had found out he was adopted. And wow. so I, I never knew I was Italian until, you know, I was older uh -huh. and then I found out I was Italian. Whoa. And uh, so my mother was from Argentina and my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. So I'm Polish and European Jew and Argentinian. Then I found out I was Italian. But when I got my 23 and me, it was like, I think I was 13% Italian or 19%. Okay, so it wasn't a majority though. No, it wasn't. No, it's probably like, a, you know, close to a quarter or whatever. Okay. But had my dad not found out that he was adopted, that would have been like, how the hell am I Italian? Yeah. So there's all this stuff that I was dating somebody at the time that um, found out it, his did not match up with what he oh, thought. Well, he thought, yeah, I think a lot of people get surprised like that. They think they're yeah. one thing and then they do these, you know, Ancestry.com or 23andMe. And then, and then they're just like, I've been living a lie. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm not, I'm not really Australian. You know? Right. <laughs> Somebody I'm, was sleeping with the person we thought right, they were sleeping yeah, with. It's, it's crazy. It happens. Yeah. And, and, and then things start to click and people are like, oh, so maybe that's why I'm like this mm -hmm. and not like this. You this. Know? I thought I was Polish, but I, I really love rum. I don't know why I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, I know it's scary. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And just to see, because if my mom, like I said, my mom had this like pretty decent percentage of British in her. I mean, there's obviously a lot of French. There yeah. Was, yeah. There was a native American, there was African American. And then, like I said, you know, or, or not even, I don't know if they call it even African American, but like whatever yeah. country from Africa that, you know, it, it only gets more and more specific as time goes on. Like they can actually pinpoint the regions Okay. from different like it's it's only gotten more specific over time but like right. for mine it was like a specific region in italy like okay. it's like 
they kind of hone in. It's really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, it just, yeah, like you said, the the technology that they have now, they're starting to be able to to really be very specific on yeah. what percentage and exact, like the, up to the neighborhood or whatever. Like It's the, nuts, like right? The region of the country yeah. your family came from. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. But so, yeah, the funny thing is I do, I, I tend to play Latino a lot, which I was talking about in the Heights and, and I, yeah. I, I came really close to uh, being the understudy for that, but I lost to one of my buddies who is Puerto Rican. So I was like, you know what? It's cool. And Respect. you yeah. sing a lot better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good, you know, but um, yeah, it's crazy that I look at my resume and I mean, you know, and it's the business we in, we're yeah. in, you know, they, they, they try to typecast or, you know, they try to not just even like type, but just what ethnicity you come off as, what do you look that's when they exactly see your headshot, it. what do you look like? Yep. And so, and that's kind of how they put you in a box. Like it's kind of how they come. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, and then I, I don't think all, uh, you know, casting directors or producers or directors are trying to do that. I think that's just what's been going on forever. And so yeah. it's kind of the formula that kind of like, we need a, a, you know, light skin. Like I've never ever gone in for a light skin black guy. I just, I just haven't. I don't know why. Really? Never. Never. I, I think maybe it's if I had like green eyes or something like that. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, okay, maybe, yeah, he could be. I nice. can't even believe that, though. I can't believe you've never gone in for that. That's no, no, like. No, Yeah, well, the, the only way, yeah. I, it's funny because when I do voiceovers, I do quite a bit of African-American yeah. spots, you know, because they, they just are going on voice. They're not yeah. going on looks. So, I mean, not that I'm I'm complaining. I mean. No, no, no. I know what you're saying, but it's interesting. You know, but it's it's pretty funny. And it, I'm like, well, maybe I just need to just, you know, just go all in and, and be fluent in Spanish and just get this, that's just get this, <laughs> this, this shit going. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, they think I'm Spanish. I might as well just like go ahead and, you, you know. know what? As long as they think you're something, you know what? Like I would never get cast as like Latina or anything, even though my mom's from Argentina. It's right. just, I don't come off that way. You're, you're, so it's like, you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the light, the light white Argentinian. Right. That's exactly it. You, you know, now you've got a nice tan going. Which yeah. Is, but that, <laughs> I booked some, some uh, you know, a lot of Latino roles in the summertime when I got my yeah. tan going. <laughs> but then in the wintertime, they're like, well, he could be Italian or he could be, you know. Uh, you could be, you know what? Arabian, you're, but, or he could yeah. be, you know, they just start pulling all kinds of stuff out, you know, so. You know, Issa Morales, the actor? Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, so actually he came to Anthony's class once when I first started with Anthony and, okay. uh, and but that guy, has played so many different ethnicities yeah. from like Arabic, you know, like to like, he's spoken different language, you know, like, which is amazing right. to be able to be seen as <laughs> another guy like that, Hank Azaria, if you know Hank Azaria, like oh, yeah, he, yeah. he can do so many different well, he, things. I mean, it, it, it helps that he has an incredible voice, like yes. his tool, like he can do accents. He, you know, he can morph himself I mean, and if you can pull off the the sound, the voice, the rest is just, you know, makeup I, or, you know, wardrobe. But yeah, the guy, he's incredible. Like he just embodies. He, he embodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I always said, actor. yeah, I always said, like, I've been saying this for a million years. Like if I could be like any actor, I'd want to be a female Hank Azaria. Like he <laughs> is like, I just think he can do it all. He can be seen as all. He could bring it. Like I just, I think he's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's but yeah, multifaceted in in that regard for sure. Yeah. So sing. What are you gonna sing? Oh man. <laughs> uh, I would, and you I, don't have to. I really won't nah, make nah, it. No, I don't mind. I mean, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Well, what do you want? You want you want just like some R and B, or you want me to do the opera thing? Since I know I brought up that I sing opera, and most people will be like, I. You know what? I would love feel free to do both, but I definitely got to hear some opera because okay. nobody would ever think that your voice does that. That's true. The way, cause I literally like, I'll just talk in the back of my throat and I'm like, Hey, right. what's up, man? You hey, would hey. never know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's funny. Cause my speaking voice is totally different than I would say my singing voice. Um, Mine I'm is too. I'm a baritone. So um, back in the day I was a tenor, you know, but now I'd have to like, you know, cross my legs and yeah. <laughs> squeeze a little hard, you know, I'd be like, yeah. 
um, but you know, counter tenor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what could I sing? I could sing, um, uh, how about, um, I'll sing some French, some French opera. I'll sing something from, the, from uh, Carmen. Um, the, the, do you know the, do you remember the Torreador? Do you know the Torreador song? It's like everybody knows it because they play it in commercials all the time. It's like, dun, and I would know dun, it. Dun, 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 oh, dun. yes. <laughs> that's, that's the Toreador song. Got it. From, from Carmen from, from Bizet. So mm -hmm. um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> actually, you know what? Let me take a little sip. Of yes, water. of course. Clear, clear my pipes. I was going to say, make the instrument well lubricated. I like myself. <laughs> not Joey opera mode now. I uh, love it. Let's see. <clears throat> Votre toast, je pule le rang, Andre Signor Signor, Cabic le soldat. We le toreros, Evan Santandra, who plays he, who plays he, his only combat. And then Toreado, oh God, Toreado. So I gotta stop because I'm gonna wake my kid up. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> Never I'm wake him up. I'm down the street, hang with the neighbors. She's like, I'm gonna put Luke down for a nap. It's like, on oh, you. Yeah, but anyway, so that's a little French uh, opera there for you. That's beautiful, man. I yeah. thank you for sharing that because that's beautiful. Absolutely. That's a get. So you said that you did, you did, um, you know, theater and stuff, and you came here wanting to do that. Is that something that is that what you still want to do, or has your yeah, you your know, jam changed? I think I, I kind of got jaded a little bit, <laughs> like when I was, you know, trying to go in for opera or not opera stuff, but for Broadway stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's tough, man, because um you know as as a broadway performer you have to be able to sing dance and act you know depending on the show triple uh, threat you know triple threat and so yeah when i first came to new york back in like 1999 i was at uh i went to uh, the american musical dramatic academy <laughs> also known as amda so a lot yes. of people know that so you know, and that was really i'd never been to new york I moved up here. My dad and me like loaded up five suitcases and he literally, I kid you not, he flew me up here, like came up here with me. He stayed a night and then he went back down to Houston. <laughs> wow. Like, Good luck, son. <laughs> bon, <What>? bon chance. <laughs> Joseph. Oh, 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 oh. You know, he's like, that's it. My dad doesn't really talk like that. But anyway, um, but literally he just like, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to go to, to, to AMDA. I think I want to try this whole like musical theater thing out. Yeah. And it was tough, man. Like school was cool. You know, that was kind of a crutch for me to move to New York. Cause yeah. A lot of people know it's tough just moving to New York just alone, just to just that... want to move to New York. But luckily I had like housing. I got luckily another scholarship to kind of yeah help with all of that, you know, kind of ease my way into the, you know, New York uh, way of, of way of, life. yes. Um, and so, but yeah, man, just auditioning and, and like the amount of callbacks, you know, that you have to go through sometimes. Yeah. You will not get it. <laughs> you know, I know people, and yeah. me included, have gone to like five, six callbacks for a show hmm. and you don't get it. And you're just like, oh my God, like, what do I have to do? You know, and, and, and hmm. I think with, with uh, theater to a certain extent, you know, you might go two, three, maybe four times, you know, if it's a chemistry read or something right. like that. And then even, but with film and television, it's like, okay, you go to your initial audition, you get a call back, screen test, you know, chemistry read, somewhere. So, you you know, it's around three, yeah. three right. maybe four. But it's, you know, you're like, you feel like it's a little bit more immediate. You know, you're not feeling like you're getting pull through the ringer trying to please yep. this producer or this director or you know it's a lot of people when you if you if you should book a broadway show yeah usually it's the director but the producers you know the people that are putting in the money they want to know that whoever they're yeah. choosing obviously is gonna 
bring in people you know if you're not a name right. like you, if you're not you really a name gotta be a talent you know you really gotta be yep. like this diamond in the rough mm. so um, exactly oh so, yeah i think i just kind of got tired i mean at one point i told my manager i said look and my agent at the time i was like i just can you can can i just not go in for some musical theater stuff for a while <laughs> <laughs> just so That's, I could like, like get my confidence yeah. back up because it, I, like I said, I came really close to doing in the Heights. I went, I literally went to a Uznavi, wow. a Uznavi camp. Like it was wow, me and and two other guys, and they basically just had us kind of doing different numbers, working on dances, and for a week, you know, it was cool, you know, working with uh, Thomas Kell and. And Lynn, you know, Manuel, which is like, I knew Lynn before all, you know, the guy's an incredible talent, but it was just crazy that I met this guy in, in my life and way before when he was just kind of coming yes. up before in the Heights yep. and bef way before Hamilton and, and to see that, you know, who he's become is, is crazy because you just never know, you, just you know, never so know. it's like, you take your opportunities, you do what you have to do. But you know, sometimes you got to step back and say, what do, what do I really want to do? What do I really enjoy? And as much as I do enjoy singing, uh, I love, I love acting. I love just doing straight plays and I love doing yeah. film, film and television um, because it, it's ever changing, you know, from episode to episode or yep. um, it's, you know, so, but I, I miss, I do miss, singing you know uh maybe not opera so much but I, I i mean i'm i'm musical and i you know i have a keyboard and a guitar and i sing for my kids i mean we're using doing the wheels on the bus it's not exactly <laughs> you know bizze or you know puccini but you know i'm still fulfilling my vocal it's, needs that's right <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> but you know i definitely want to kind of get back it, uh, into doing musical stuff um you know i've done some regional stuff which is which is cool but broadway yeah. i still haven't ticked that off my box yet so we'll see yet you know, exactly I still got time i still got time so you did um you definitely still have time um and you did Stephen adley gerges's play right did. did you our lady of 121st is I that did. what i did yeah i played baltazar which was that was a surreal uh experience because i'd read you know Stephen's plays even in high school, you know, and, and, and then especially when I came to New York, you like, this guy's from New York and he's writing about New York and, yep. you know, it's just, and, uh, and then to work with Felicia Rashad who directed was like, bananas, man, like it was bananas, nuts, man, that I, I had this, I got this opportunity. Uh, and I really like, I really wanted that when I poured a lot into it uh to get it and i and i had actually read for edwin first hmm. which was funny because i read for edwin <laughs> and uh eric betancourt who is an, <laughs> an actor me. really cool dude yeah um and he, he they wound up having me read for both edwin and then they're like you know what, what about baltazar so with the, my actual callback i did I read for Edwin and I read for Balthazar. Ah. Uh, for like all of the signature theater people. Wow. Like Richard and Stephen Alley Gurgis. Like everybody was in the room. And I was just like, I had to take a moment in between because <laughs> it was, I mean, he writes some really gritty, um, emotional stuff, you know, and the, the scenes a, that they picked were like, they were, they were tough. They were tough. Stephen, um, actually, so I met Steven like through a friend years ago, totally outside of the acting world. Oh, and yeah. so, yeah, so he's, he's a friend of mine and I actually ran into him. Maybe it was a couple of years ago at the airport and it was like, damn it. I haven't seen you in so long. And I've been trying to, we've been uh, trying to connect. I want to see if he'll come on the show. I think oh. he'd be, a, I think he'd be a great, um, he's, I mean, he's so awesome. And he's such nah, a they freaking got character of, of uh, some really choice words and wisdom. And he just, he gets um, humanity. He, he really gets humanity and it shows he in does. his work, how, how he writes his characters, you know, and they're so like vivid and real and um, just and he, strong, and, you know? 
and he is. That's how oh, he no, is. Oh, no, no, he's as I, a personal. I, I, I had the pleasure of, I, I actually got to hang out while we were doing so. I got to hang out at his apartment on Riverside one night. <laughs> nice. We're just all like, you know, we was just kind of by a, a, a session, like a half session. We're just asking yeah. questions. We're drinking tequila. You know, he has some Don Julio rolling. And we're literally awesome. just sitting in his kitchen. I'm like, I'm sitting in Stephen Alley Gear, just his kitchen. <laughs> like, asking him questions about my my character. And, and it was just, it was just crazy. So I, that'll definitely be one of my highlights um, for doing uh, a show, you know, uh, in New York, that was that was just crazy. Our cast was was bomb, and um, yeah, yeah, I would love to do more. Yeah, Stephen Alley Gurgis plays. Yes, <laughs> Stephen, do you hear that? Get on the show, man. Yeah, but no, he should definitely Joey. come through. He should definitely come through. I mean, it you know, just he's just a real like he's real. He's a real cat. He's real, just, and he <laughs> he talks to you, and he's just and you want to listen. You know, he's just that kind of person. So and he'll. It, he would tell me to my face, like, like, I don't want to hear you. Right. Now. <laughs> like, that's how he is. Like he's, he's, and I, I, you got to appreciate has no that. Filter, which is, which is nice. I mean, and the crazy thing is he, he's not a big social person unless, unless you're yeah. really in his circle, you know, if you're, you know, obviously, um, you know, he was, you know, one of the main folks in, in the labyrinth that, start, yeah, that started it, you know? And so um, if you're in that circle, you know, he's tight, but I, you know, some some guys who are just genius, you know, they, yep. they're not trying to like hang out with everybody. Right. They want to hang out with their friends and the people they know and the people that they know are good people. Yep. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say I could call them up and be like, hey, Steve, it's Joey. Who? <laughs> It's like I played Baltazar, you know, in your play <laughs> at the signature in 2018. It was, I did it. I think you liked it. It was, it was good. Hopper, you know, Felicia. And he, oh, Joey. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, you know, I'm not in his circle, but I, yeah. you know, I feel like I kind of got to touch the circle because I got to do his show. And he was there yeah. to approve on it. So, yeah, uh, that was special. That was definitely a special, it's very uh, special. moment in my acting career. That's beautiful. I know when KB, so oh, KB is uh, another acting uh, friend of ours, that yes. a mutual close friend of, of ours. And uh, it's so funny because like Joey and I both know KB so well, but Joey and I, you, like we've known each other through the years, but we don't like, we both are like real tight with KB. So right. it's like this extension. It's, it's so funny. Well, I think you're tighter with him because he, he, he actually comes to see you from time to time. I, I, I've been trying to, he helped me move into this house and I hadn't seen him since. And I'm like, yo, man, I'm barbecuing. It's, and it's so funny because you're like somebody that he mentioned. You're like one person that he cares to like make sure he stays in touch with. Make yeah, sure, like, no, KB is good people. He's, um, you know, and, and that's the thing. You, you find people as you navigate through this acting, whatever you want to call yeah. it, you know, your career. Um you find good people <clears throat> that you that you want to stay in touch with and that you connect with, you know, because we need that support, you know, and it. It, it used to be, I think, back in the day, everybody was kind of like, you know, against each other, not necessarily against, but it was it was very competitive. competitive you know? Yeah. Not that me and KB are going in for the same roles because. Right. I look Latino and he's Korean. <laughs> I don't go in for too many Korean roles. Wait, at least, he's not at least white? Not yet. Not yet. He, What's that? <laughs> he's What's not that? white? No, no, KB is, is very Korean. All right, that is the first I'm hearing of that. Yeah, I know. Kind of weird. I know. <laughs> I know, yeah, I don't think you know him as well as you thought. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. Yeah, like no. Said, you know, you meet, you meet people. And the funny thing is, I, I, I remember when we were in class together and we were, we were you know, get, trying to prep up to do a scene. Together. Yeah, to do a scene. It didn't quite happen. It didn't quite happen. I remember that. <laughs> we kept missing each other, like two boats in the ocean. Yes. And I'll you, call him and we'll, I'll set up the uh, the time and the place and uh, oh. and, I, and then it it just was like, but yeah, you then, you also you already had a kid at that point, I believe. I I did have a kid at that point. I had my my, my daughter Nola because I was <laughs> in New Orleans, Louisiana. So it was uh. like, yeah, Nola is a this is a no brainer. So <laughs> I went with Nola, so yeah, but um. <laughs> I, yeah, I was in Astoria at the time. Yeah. Yeah, back in 2012. So that's when I had my first little one. And I think I tried to 
put off the whole getting married, having kids thing. Cause as an actor, <laughs> you feel like if, if you, you go that route, then your acting career is going to suffer because it's, you know, having a family is time consuming. Of course. And, and as a, if you're not, you know, working steadily, bringing in that, that mood, right. out, you know, it's you, you have to hustle when you gotta do what you gotta do to pay the bills. Yeah. And so I tried to stave off that whole getting married and having kids mm -hmm. thing. Cause I thought that's what I was thinking. I was like, my career is going to go south and I'm not going to, I think the same thing. Yeah. Focus on, on getting better and, you know, and it, it is, it's a balance. Believe me, I got three kids now and I'm like, I know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm how like, do you do that? <laughs> I just, I just do it. You kind of go on autopilot and, you know, having a kid back in, in 2012 and then I had my son in 2015 and then I just had another one last November. Amazing. He's a year on the 12th of November. God, and at this man. point, you're like, after two, you're just like, ah, oh, whatever. Just, <laughs> I, whatever. We'll get the, we'll get the oldest one to take care yeah. of this one. And, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll be all right. We'll, we'll figure it out. And luckily my, my <laughs> wife is really supportive and, uh, you know, like, 85 percent of the time and then there's sometimes because she works a very vigorous job as well so it's, there's that yeah. balance of trying to take care of the kids do i have time to do uh self-tape you know yeah um learn my lines i mean you know i'm putting kids to bed at, at 8 39 yeah and the wifey wants to kick it and watch shits creak together till yeah. 30 <laughs> you know 11 and then i'm like oh that's right i still got that self-tape to send to right you know Tucker and Myerson for tomorrow. Yeah. So yep. it's, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I call myself Batman now cause I can literally sleep two hours and I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> how? Let's take care of this. <laughs> I sleep seven and a half and I'm like, I'm not getting up. <laughs> yeah. You know what my secret is? It's, it's peppermint tea. Is that right? And I don't know what it does. I don't put any bourbon in it. I don't, you know, most people like you gotta be adding something. It's not yeah. Just, it's not just pure mint tea. <laughs> There's something else going on in there. There's something else going on, but, but no. I'm serious. For whatever reason, I don't know if it just works for me, but yeah. I I literally drink a cup of, of mint tea, peppermint, not just mint. Yeah. Peppermint, pure peppermint tea. Huh. This is like commercial right bed. now. And I don't know if it's just a digestion <laughs> thing, but and you know, it, it's gotten better. Like we've been, we've been able to put our kids on schedules and all that stuff. That right? helps so we, tremendously. That yes. helps a whole hell of a lot. It was yeah. like that the first time around, we tried to have oh, to figure it out yeah. on the curve because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. But after we're, of course. Nola was born, then Bo came, we're like, oh, we got this. And now Luke, and we're like, this kid, he's doing like, <laughs> he's sleeping like, you know, 15 hours a, a day, a nap here, a nap there, you know. So I'm I'm actually getting probably like five hours now. So Wow, so you you're know. killing it. <laughs> like I can go climb a mountain. I'm three extra hours of sleep and I did a self-tape. What? That's I'm gonna <laughs> this baby. <laughs> it's really amazing though. I actually know my lines. What? I know that's, my I lines. actually know them. I mean, that's kind of amazing because that's been, I mean. That's been my, I, I want to be a mom and I feel. That's what, that's everybody's thing, man. Believe me, it's, it's tough to think that you can balance an acting career effectively or whatever yeah. you're doing, casting. In this business, just especially, it's just so erratic. Oh yeah, yeah. Unpredictable. Well, we're so, acting is, is very, um, it's just in yes. the moment. You don't know usually that much ahead of time of when you're going to have an exactly. audition or. If you do, you know, happen to book something, you're like, what your schedule is going to be? How do you coordinate a babysitter? Yeah. Like, I literally used to bring Nola, yeah. my daughter, to the I would slip it from Astoria into Times Square in a upper baby stroller. And that thing ain't <laughs> like, so I'm going down subway stairs with a stroller. And, you know, and I'm like, I bring her in. And luckily, oh, thank God, she was one of the quietest babies. See, that's great. It was a quiet baby. I just pop her, her little binky or uh, passing yeah. in or whatever. And she would just chill out. Like I could bring her in a room. I remember bringing her in a room at house when they were down yeah. on 15th and 10th Avenue. And she would just in the corner chilling, like, you know, just watching daddy do, do his thing. 
And then Bo came, and that, that was that went out the window. <laughs> He's a boy. He's like, nah, I'm fucking this shit up. <laughs> He's like, I'm hopping yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, you messed that line. You messed up on that line. You know. He like kicks the casting director, knocks over the camera. Right. So they're like, that kid's funny. You gotta. Does he have an agent? Right. Can, oh, it's get in touch. Funny. So, you know, my kid started booking stuff, and For I real? wouldn't book it. I just stop. I'd stop bringing them. I'm like, y'all, y'all are causing me jobs. Y'all are getting jobs, but y'all are causing me jobs. <laughs> So, That's so we funny, come man. to an agreement now, and so they actually go in for some commercial stuff with me, as me being the father yeah. and, the, and the kid. And, That's great. Know, kind of, so it's cool, you know. They like it once in a while. You yeah, know, if they're if they they're patient enough, you know. Yeah, it's wow. It's crazy. It's craziness. I ain't gonna lie. It's it's crazy, but I love acting and I love my family, and so you just kind of gotta figure it out man that's what it, it is possible you can you know you need a really strong partner though yes. especially if they're not in the business and they're not a serious regular yeah on a show where you have the money <laughs> to to pay for babysitters and, and yeah that sort of thing. so it's it's tough you know you gotta do it together it's yeah i mean like that's the thing um my well, like my boyfriend and I, I think we probably would be engaged in stuff quarantine happened and that changed the course of everything we're kind of oh, just like yeah. Yeah, like uh, you know, uh, don't give me too much information now. That we, <laughs> we might have this might have to elongate this this podcast that we have to talk about. I know, right? What's going on with Sammy? I know. Sammy yeah, Jay. this is that. It's a story for another day. Sammy J on Sammy J. But <laughs> on Sammy J. But you know what, man? But I, it's good to hear, and it's good for other actors and people to hear that it's doable, and that they can have a family, they can have a significant other, and it can work. I think yeah. that that's important for people to hear because yeah, it is it's, it is it's 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 not easy but it's rewarding um because look say you you put the whole family thing on hold you date and you date and we've seen this in hollywood and yeah. you know and and you got these you know single bachelors or you know they they're doing great they have these crazy careers but they're bouncing from partner to partner and yeah know scandal this and oh he's not dating this actress anymore he's dating this model right. and and you kind of float through life and, and you don't have anybody to share your successes with you know? know and that's and i think that's that's important you know to to have that balance um and so yeah i totally feel blessed that i found somebody who gets what i do we we're able to have a family and and still somehow have time for daddy to do a self-tape so that's <laughs> from time to time <laughs> It's like the best life in one sentence. And then, and then I can cook too. And then we eat good too. I got a barbecue pit in the backyard. You know, I know. Jersey. And so you I were saying you bake, you cook. Damn, I man. do like to What cook. don't you do? What don't uh, you do? I don't know. That, 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 <laughs> I, I, I don't know. know. I don't you know, know what? You, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you. So you said um, one thing. Uh, so b before I interview people, I just asked if, like, if there's anything they might want to talk about, maybe you definitely don't want to talk about. Joey's an open book, uh, yeah, so we could, we could have gone or went anywhere, but uh, you know, Joey's good with that. But I was going to ask you one thing you said was like what it's like ha having incredible patience, being a working actor, and I would love to hear about that. But what I also wanted to say, what do you or ask, what do you not have patience for, like what and. And maybe particularly in this business, do you, are you just like not having it or that drives you crazier than anything? Like, what is that? Can in you think the, of it? In the business. Uh, in, the in the business and in life. Because <laughs> I'm just curious about what you. What do I not have patience for? Um, I just, I guess overall for me, it's just people like, uh, just people just trying to outright be mean. Like I know it sounds very dull or but no, but in the business there are there and it's not even actors sometimes. Sometimes it might be some people on the other side of the camera. Yeah. You know, I, I or, know it. or um or even on set. Yeah, you know, like you know, I've I've met some some folks and it's it's not crew, but it might be a director or it might be, you know, just people who just go out of their way to just be mean because they yep. can or they hold a position okay. where they think they can ab abuse their power yep um and i don't i don't have i don't have patience for that like i i really try to distance myself 
from uh, people like that because it, it doesn't serve me the negative the negativeness that you know it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make me feel good and you're like oh well maybe that person's just having a bad day and that could be true maybe they're having a bad day but I'm not going to stick around to find out why they're having a bad yeah. day <laughs> I just I just kind of exit and I try to you know pull myself towards positive energy you yeah. know I really believe in being uh optimistic and and being positive and, and surrounding yeah. yourself with with people that are the same um because there's just too many there's just too much stuff going on in the world it's hard enough put yourself in a position where you have to deal with somebody you know but you obviously in our business <clears throat> you come around people like that and you, you do have to have a certain level of patience but i just take myself out of the picture yeah. like i'm like I'm gonna go chill in my trailer or I'm gonna go. Yeah. But for my experiences is for the most part, the actors, the crew, I always try to be really chill, just low maintenance. Yeah. Makeup, whatever, you know, because whatever. everybody's there to do a job. And yeah. And sometimes people have bad days and you just gotta kind of like, all right. Yep. I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to let you do your thing. You're I was going to say, let them. Yeah. yeah. Just let them do whatever. And, 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 you know, but that's really, I just don't like people who are outright just trying to be malicious or, yes. or mean, you know, cause we, it's like, especially this year, this year, there's enough for everybody to go around without you creating your own. Exactly. Stuff, you know, like <laughs> so, yeah. everybody's hurting. Everybody's having a hard time get out of yourself, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, and like, yeah. Think of others. Just it's, try yeah, it's and, about empathy yeah. and compassion. Like yes. no doubt, you know, even on a small scale, whatever, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. That yep. that's always been my, my mantra uh, and people sweat the small stuff and they let it get to them. And then they, they shit on other people because they're not in a good place, you know? And it's just like, yep. why, you know, I know why nah. I know it's like, you know, uh, I had this whole conversation the other day, but some people just are just stuck at a certain point in their, in their, um, you know, it's like arrested development. Some people never grew past 11 emotionally and they're still that 11 year old that's stunted and defensive and, and it's everybody else's fault. They, yes. or, you know, not that, not that bad things haven't happened to them that, that yeah. make them, you know, feel or act the way they act. But mm -hmm. at some point you have to take a, a little bit of responsibility or even if it isn't your fault that you're in, I mean, whatever, however your childhood or how you grew yeah. up, everybody has their story. And, and that's why you need to be empathetic to people regardless. Cause you yes. don't know where people you never you know what happened to them and how they lived and what they've been through. And so if everybody had that mentality of just, that's just be nice, just just or cordial and and and, and, and but you know I, I go further than that. I, I try to go out of my way to to be helpful because it it, yep. it feels good to help other people, you know. Uh, and if I think if more people did that, they would get it. Like we really, you know, not to sound all kumbaya, but we are all in this now. We're really all in this together now because yeah. of Corona and all yeah. the other stuff that's going on it's, yeah it's, it's it's maddening you know that, yeah that here we are and so i think a lot of people have had time to self-reflect this year and see what's really important yep you know it's uh, you mentioned two things but like one i was so i told you i was like on that uh panel kind of thing right. that I was a guest and the other day and i was talking about how important it is to be a generous actor and somebody yeah. asked me specifically what do i mean about to be a generous actor and uh, like, what did I mean by that? And I just brought it into context of enacting, but also as a person, like, think about what can I bring to this? How can I give to this? How can I think of the other person that's there and yeah. not about what can I get out of this? How can I make right. this It's not always mine. about me, me, me. Well, then acting, you know, it's and in life too, but in acting, yeah. you know, being a generous actor, you know, listening and, and being uh, aware of, of what's what's going on. But yeah. yeah, giving to the other actor, if it don't make the scene about you, you know, right. it's not about you. It's like, yeah, it's being you know, of service. Like it's like being of service to the thing. Exactly. You know, yeah. you're, you're just a, a, a part of the puzzle. And um, a lot of people think, acting and being on on camera is about 
you know, me, 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 and, you know, how do I look and how do I sound and did I, did I give a good performance? And it, it kind of, it takes away from, from yeah. what's really supposed to be transpiring, which is, yeah. you know, you're trying to show this, this relationship, what's your relationship to this person? Yeah. And, um, you know, people misconstrue, what do I want? Like when I started seeing what I, I, I thinking, what do I, what do I want? Right. You know, and so, and then it's all about them trying to get what they want, the whole right. scene, as opposed like to it, really listening and tuning in listening. to the other person. Right. And, and yep. just being responsive, like really yep. just being responsive, like, cause that's how you get people, that's how you draw people in because they're, they're they they want to experience what you're experiencing. They're, they're tuning in because they want to be moved. They want to yep. be, they want to relate. And that's a hundred percent. And that's the same. When I do this show, that's the same thing. People are like, um, okay, well, should I, you know, what should I prepare? Like before they come on the show, what should I prepare? Or like, how would you like me to, and I'm like, just be you, be right, you right, and we'll right. go with it. That's any celebrity or any person that's, you know, known that does their thing that I'm interested in. And then I see them in an interview and they're very good at being famous and you get, I get a version of them. Like they're just good at being, I immediately am disconnected. I'm like, right. eh, I, I, and like I, when I was on that thing the other day, the, the host said, so you are obviously a very happy, positive person. So for people that aren't, what advice would you give? And like, and I said, first thing I'll say is I'm not. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm not a happy, positive person. Thank you very much. I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you, did, did, what did you just say to me? Like, <laughs> Now, well, you know, but that's the perception, but that's the perception, that's the perception that you get. And, 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 and we do that. We do that subconsciously. People put right. on this like cheery, you know, everything's fine. Everything's cool yeah. kind of a thing, unless it's somebody that we really know. And then we let the guard down and we let the guard people down. find out, oh, they're not really that happy, you know, and, and it's crazy. You hear these stories about, you know, certain celebrities and they have the life, they're doing their thing, but they, well, for whatever reason, they're still trying to fill some kind of void. Yes. And yep. they act out and they do some of the most ridiculous things. And you're yep. like, why? Like you I have know. an incredible life. You have a steady job on a hit show and and you're effing it up because- And and because the external things don't make the internal. Like you're right, you're right, you're right. You gotta, gotta find happy. it within. You gotta be happy inside first. So yeah. You enjoy all the other stuff. Yeah, that's all. That's all bonus. But if you're not, if you're not there here, yeah, you're yeah. not. You're not with any of that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So Joey, I have this uh, portion of my show that's called uh, "The Feather in Your Cap." Okay. And by "feather in your cap," I mean an achievement of yours, something you've learned that's been useful to you that you've been able to kind of, that comes to mind that served, that has served you or that may serve you in the future. Um, right. Some, some pearl of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Something that, and it could be anything that comes to mind for you that you might be willing to offer that somebody else could be, find useful. Um, Ooh, heck. Let's see. I mean, I don't know if, as, as as far as what just acting, life in Any, general, anything. anything, anything, anything comes to mind. All right. So when you're brining your turkey, right for Thanksgiving, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sure, I want to know this. Make sure <laughs> you use half a cup of sugar, not three quarters cup. Half? No. Okay, I'll get serious. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I was said, like, I've never made a turkey. That's so that's the chef like... <laughs> coming out. That's the chef coming out in me. I love uh, that. That's probably what I would be doing. If I wasn't doing the acting thing, I would definitely, I have a, a long line of, of cooks and chefs in my, being Creole. I mean, family, yeah. people from New Orleans and Louisiana and in, in Texas, cook. we see the barbecue or we're yep. making a gumbo or we're, you know, we're always so that luckily. We should all have. We should have a, a barbecue at some point. I, you know what? I, I'm, tr if this, you know, I was going to invite everybody out to West Orange and yeah. you know, this whole pandemic thing freaking showed up and like, I know, 
the hell? Had, like, all these party favors, and I had to uh, them. I had to go back to Party City and return them. Ah, uh, I know, but we'll make it happen at once. Yeah, the, once the vaccine comes out. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> we'll we'll make see it what happen. happens but, there. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like, like you said, you. I think maybe you mentioned this. Is this you just have to be yourself don't put on this front you know like you you talked about the hollywood actors being very they act you know it's famous but the ones that people really like the ones that have a great fan base is the or the actors that just are just being themselves they're quirky they're unique they don't they're not trying to put on a facade they're just because that's really what's going to separate you from everybody else don't try to be this dark brooding actor dramatic guy if that's not really who you are in person you yeah. know um i get it we have to play characters we want to try and and get in the character shoes and we want to you know embody them and metamorphosize and you know <laughs> i am going to become a priest or whatever the role may be you know you know, it's funny because I had an audition recently and I had to play a priest, right? That's a good one. That's another story. But uh not yeah. Um I'm Catholic. Okay, anyway, I'll get that. Okay, so so anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just have to you gotta be you gotta be yourself, man. And I'm and I, I catch myself. I have to reel myself in and say, yo, they really just want you to be you. That's like yeah you know actors singers people <clears throat> that that follow certain actors and singers and and just people in general they like you and like what you're doing because you're unique like you there's nobody like you yeah. and so don't make it don't don't make it uh hard for yourself as as yeah. they say k i s s keep it simple stupid keep stupid yeah you know <laughs> just 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 do you and that'll serve you better than anything else when it comes to auditioning and and in life now some people you know have faults as we all do i know we all do. I'm, I'm guilty for that Ditto. for sure <laughs> um but but that doesn't mean well that's this is just the way i am i'm yeah. being unique right you, man <laughs> Whoa, what you want take you know, yeah just leave, take it or leave it man <laughs> yeah i'm unique no it's like no you're being an asshole so yeah just chill check out. yourself there's, yeah there's a difference there's a difference between being unique and being yourself and then just being an outright not a nice person yes which i don't i don't jive well with. yeah I, that's exa- I was gonna say the exact same thing i'm like i'm driving yeah. that <laughs> so you know but yeah just it's really about and then and but you just have to have to have a passion uh for what you do whatever it may be you know um but to be an actor, you gotta, you, you really gotta want it, man. You just, you gotta really be tough skin and you gotta love rejection. You gotta love it. Yeah. I, I can't. You gotta I, feed I, on I, it. I wanna write a book about how much I love rejection because I get a lot of it. You know, <laughs> you, everybody sees the successes, but they don't see the stuff that comes before yeah. that. Or yeah. even even when you have successes, there's st- there's still rejections that come after that. You yeah. know, so you you just gotta be tough and and really be passionate, whether it be acting or cooking or painting or taxes or accounting <laughs> or what you know, if you whatever it is crunching numbers, yo, man, you go get that job at Price Fister <laughs> and Waterhouse and you do your thing. And if you want to be on a regular series regular for whatever, then you, you just, you know, you gotta make time to 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 cultivate your 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 talent and, and yeah. you, you have to be patient. You gotta be patient with yourself. Don't everybody wants to say, I'm on a five year plan, a ten year plan, and I wanna be here. And it's cool um setting goals for yourself. I was, yep. It, it's nothing wrong with setting goals for yourself. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 not right or it's not it's not uh fair to your to yourself to chastise yourself or beat yourself up when you don't meet that goal when you yeah. thought you were going to meet it you know what i'm saying it's, it's not in our time frame we can do the footwork all the footwork but the time frame of when the results happen yeah. that's not up to us yeah, yep. yeah yeah you you just it's really about patience and 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 belief you know that that you actually have what it takes 
yeah and it'll come it'll come and and it's hard because you see friends that might have been doing it uh, you know acting less time than you've been doing it right and they're having great successes right now early on in their careers mm -hmm. like you know i've been doing this for yeah like why isn't this happening for me and it's yeah. just everybody has their moment everybody yeah. and it's whether or not you stay in there long enough to i was just gonna come say to fruition you know a lot of people they bail out because they they just they, their skins aren't tough enough or yeah. you know whatever there's always circumstances why people yeah. get out of the business earlier than others yeah uh, but some just like oh, i should i was supposed to do this you know by the time i was 35 and it hasn't happened so i'm gonna go get a desk job you know or whatever and it's just like you know b believe in yourself give yourself time to grow yeah. and it'll happen you know yeah. it, it, you just gotta really um give yourself the benefit of the doubt that you, you yeah. have what it takes that's it's all such, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's more than just, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, that's you great. Know, I, like, I, like I said, I'm old, so I have a little bit of wisdom. I don't look it, but I, you know. You don't, yeah. you don't look it, man. Little pearls of wisdom. They're all in that's here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's a really good one. And it's a good reminder for me, and I'm sure you guys just keep doing it. If you have yeah, to, yeah. if you, if, if it, if it makes you happy, if that's where your heart's at, just keep doing it. It's just yeah. a matter of time and it's not going to be like the person next door is their timetable is different. It's just how it is. Yeah. It's, it's tough, man. Cause especially now there's a lot of actors out of, out of, especially, you know, stage actors and Broadway yeah. actors who that's what they do. I'm, I, I feel blessed because I, I'm not the greatest dancer, you know, I can sing luckily and I can act and, yeah. you know, but it's, it's trying to like stir a bunch of pots, right. And see what yeah. boils over. Cause yeah. you know, sometimes when you're, when you specialize in one thing and then that livelihood is totally like taken away from you, it's yeah. like, now what do I do? You know, it, it, you have to like, like we say, you got to hustle or and try and figure out um, what to do just to, just to, Pay, pay your bills you know and exactly as a former uh service industry uh person i bartended Chitto. many many years yeah. uh, even in college back in new orleans and then when i came to new york and and now you know it we don't even really have that to fall back on uh um, i know between I know. you know auditions and gigs so it's just man it's just tough it's for a everybody crazy time right now so we'll get through it yeah, I, I really believe we will get through it. it it'll take some time. But it as as time. a community, we do need to like lean on each other, you know, and, and, yeah. and just be there for each other, man. And, and yeah. hopefully on November 3rd, stuff will really knock on. Knock on every wood of magic. Yeah, ever. Yeah, <laughs> that, that things will, there'll be a shining light after November yep. 3rd and, and this country will kind of get going back in the direction and then yep. everything also fall back into place. Um, God I willing. I, yeah. Our, our, uh, <clears throat> I think our political system has really been exposed, you know, like what really happens and what really, what's really going on because it's affected everybody this time around. This you know? time around. And it's, we'll see what happens November 3rd, but yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah. So God willing, we, we certainly need some changes. So tell us where we can find us. Guys, uh, all of Joey's info will be, see, you can dance, man. <laughs> that, that is not that. I can, I can freestyle. That that was like the really bad dad. I know, I'm kidding. <laughs> that was like my bad dad's cabbage. Hey. Do your kids make fun of you? <laughs> no, cause they can't dance. Their mom's from, <laughs> my, their mom's from, 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 from England. They can't, <laughs> they're half British and half Creole, which I don't even know what that means because they're like eight different things. So, you know, so funny, uh, man. And but they can sing a little bit. I'm I'm like, don't don't sit next to mom at church because <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna start picking up. <laughs> Cover that ear and sit next to me little, and just you're gonna be sharp every time you sing. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's what that's what's funny. Is, you know, you, your kids they. My daughter discovered that I had videos on YouTube, like of me singing, like back in the day. Huh. When I had free time to go to a right. studio and record myself on the piano. Wow. And, you know, Gavin DeGraw or whatever I was into at the time. Now I'm going to like totally be looking <laughs> this up after it. <laughs> you know? and so my daughter's like, Daddy, you're famous. And I'm like, No, baby, I'm not famous. 
that that video was put up 10 years ago that's the only <laughs> reason why i have 400 <laughs> views <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's cool that your kids are into my kids are into like me acting and a lot of stuff I do they can't see right because I, I tend to play these gritty yeah characters. you know yeah. I play these bad guys and I'm trying as a dad now I'm trying to go to towards more positive roles that you know but the the, the 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 bad guys are fun though don't get me wrong I love playing a good bad guy but it's like you know, how many interrogation scenes do I need on my reel? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've done all three law and orders. Okay, that person interrogated me. Uh, okay, Ice T, he interrogated me. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, oh. so it's, you know, it, it's it's cool that they take an interest in, but I definitely, Wonderful. you know, you gotta, you try to pick your, your, uh, your roles after yes. you've done so many. Yes. You know, Give me a purse. Or, you know. <laughs> I'll take some of those. I always want to be a badass. Like, yeah, well, you know, it's it's all about, you know, what, what yeah. your headshot looks like, too. So I think I'm yep. going to clean up my, my headshot. You know, I try to do the clean shaving, you know, yeah. hold up a red balloon and wear bow tie. Dude. I'm really not a bad person. <laughs> Look. Here's my kids. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, mm, he'd be a good pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, we're not going to do that one. We'll just, yeah, no. we'll just go with like a, I don't know, white shirt with a, a red yeah. sweater, you know. Just, we're Banana Republic, you know. It's so funny. Oh, my God. It's it's all stylized, man. You gotta it out. is. It is. I just I, changed my headshot and got like three auditions this week. One, like, legit one that I've never been you. called three, into their office. Auditions. Nice. Yeah, and not – and. That's but since changing my headshot. Like ah, there you go. It's so it's I mean, something to be said. Yeah, about yeah no, that. you're right. I mean, it, it is your calling card. So, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, I tried to get get back in the day, I tried to get away with, you know, uh, a couple of my friends who were, you know, there there's some friends that are actually very talented photographers, like they do yeah. it as a side hustle. Yeah, and, yeah. And then you got friends that are like, Oh, I just got this new Nikon 5D, man. Yeah. I was reading the manual last night. <laughs> you do some you want to do some headshots? And I'm like, it's free, right? <laughs> as long, I'm helping you too yeah, to learn. I'm, like, I'm helping you learn how to use your camera. So I, you know, I'll, but now, you know, the, the 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 cameras now are like incredible. Like I, they're you know, incredible. They, you can take good shots. I say that loosely. You can take good shots, you know. Yeah. Whether, whether or not your agent or your manager is going to be like, mm, I don't yeah, really like that one. That I one. know. You know, I know. You know, but no, what if we just like blow out that brick wall behind? I know, us, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> so, so it tweak. is, it's important to have a, a good yeah. headshot, and I've learned that over the years, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, maybe I don't know, I, I, I like to look at other people's headshots and be like, what kind of roles do you go out for? And then, yeah, I look at their headshots, and I'm like, you know, not to copy, but just kind of change it up a little bit, you know, yeah. leave, leave the leather jacket. And the wife beat her in the closet and yeah. you know, try and go with something a little more wholesome. I can um, picture some some shots for you that would get you some different kind of stuff. I just kind of yeah. was piecing that together in my head. We could talk about it. That's but, uh, I'm, I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I just had some ideas that that uh uh I could just see it. Yeah, like, I just uh, want I wanna do I wanna do more comedy. I do I do quite a bit of drama, which is this yeah. is, doesn't make sense because I'm like I I think I'm kind of funny. <laughs> You're like, you I'm know? a clown most of the day. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and after watching the whole <laughs> Shit's Creek series, I'm like, I totally a comedic actor. <laughs> I, 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 I could have played Patrick. I could have played. I can be dry. And I don't mind kissing man. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You're like, why, why was but, I not yeah, cast? I, I like, I want to play more comedic roles. And I think my headshot would probably yes. help facilitate that uh instead of the brooding yeah you know yes i think you could have such a warmth we'll talk about this okay uh, that sounds I, good. I have some ideas yeah but All tell right. us tell everybody where they can find you i'll okay, also yeah. put it with so, the episode but yeah uh so i actually have a website so it's just joeyozan.com that has uh, awesome. a couple of my uh clips from various stuff that i've done um headshots and 
you know, it's a it's a Great. it's a website, you know, which is Great. I finally got one of those after like, I finally do, I just made mine. I'm like, I feel so proud of myself. I'm like I don't I don't hard. I don't upkeep it very well. I'm yeah. like, you know, last thing is like, oh I think I think my last thing I did on there was like, I don't know something, my head shatter. I don't know. I yeah. I, need, I need to go in there and update it a little bit. But you know, All I have right. but you have it. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that and and it's easy to remember. Joey Ozan dot com and then my uh ig my insta is joey underscore o as an au because that's how you say o in francais uh, so joey underscore au underscore official joey o official i should probably just put joey o official, official. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> I don't know I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not you know I'm French no, but I I'm like yours French. Yeah, yeah so uh and then <laughs> no I dig it and yeah. at Joey Ozan on Twitter Th- those are my my uh handles pretty much there at awesome. Joey at Joey Ozan and yeah so but awesome. I gotta get my IG game up though it's that's it's, what it's slacking. dude it's like a I, I try like I I hop on there I like do my due dil- diligence I post some stuff and then I'm like I'm out like, yeah, I don't I don't even have time to post stuff like, you know, every time I'm, I know. I'm about to post something, my my daughter's like, Daddy, why are you on your <laughs> phone again? And I'm just like, OK, here okay, I am. Phone's I know. Out. I told you I had cookie dinner an hour ago. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. I was I was being a human. Be relevant. Like, sorry. <laughs> they don't get it. I know she's they don't like, get it. Oh, you know, she just wants to do Snapchat. And I'm like, no, no. Yeah. No, in or TikTok, and I'm like, you're definitely not doing TikTok. <laughs> I don't want China spying on my phone. I don't. It's I don't. like, God, all this stuff. I don't. It's my a lot kids, of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of stuff, but you know, I I comment, and you know, obviously we we actually yeah correspond on IG, yes. you know, from time to time, and so yeah, which is this nice. This is crazy, man. It's crazy when you got three kids so you ig when you can or you know or yes you don't you don't ig or you just don't i know i'm like i'm not ig yeah that's week, you know i'm not gonna I'm but then gonna. look but we we made it happen my cat just ran by us like what is that uh we made it happen man we made we it did. happen i know i know it's been i'm it's so been happy time in the making but i appreciate yes. you uh having me come on and this was i'm so of, glad you fun. came on yeah. And we'll talk and dude, we'll have you on another time. We'll hear more about what's been going on and more yeah, projects. Yeah, I would love to. We could talk about talk about you. That's what maybe that <laughs> maybe off air. <laughs> no, nah, we, won't, we won't record that podcast. We won't do that one. That, that'll be a, a uh, scene. Behind yes, behind the scenes, guys. Behind maybe you'll get a, a clip or but, something. But how have you been enjoying doing this podcast? Like, I know you've been doing it for a while. And is it? I- I've thought about doing one, but like I said, I have three kids, so I'm not, I don't have time to do one, but it's a lot, it's a lot of work. It, it is, is a lot right? of work, Yeah. but I got to say like, for the purpose of doing it, um, it makes me better. Like I can want to isolate. I can be in a bad mood. I can not, I could be exhausted, not want to do an interview. Right. And like, as soon as I'm in, like I was exhausted today, like could not, as soon as we're in, like I'm so much better after talking to you like i just feel more connected well, I'm, that, I'm happy I, I, god I, damn man where to make a I, day I good mean, <laughs> like like my smoked turkey for thanksgiving <laughs> my personality is very succulent and uh it just b- puts a smile on people's face i just it just makes you laugh when you eat my turkey <laughs> just like me i make you laugh so i don't know where i was going with that but you know, it's, but yeah, sometimes it's good to just, you know, it's energy too. You know, people have good energy and as, as I, you know, every time we, we get to talk, I, yes. you've always been a very positive, uplifting Thank you. Kind of person, even though it's, it's not really there. But <laughs> even the though I'm miserable and I hate everything. I hate everybody. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no it's cool man I, I i really enjoyed this and um yeah thanks for being time, on man anytime, yeah we could talk about whatever what i know that's what's so nice we could just ramble about everything I, yeah i i could not talk about acting and i'd be totally fine because I, I know I, dude you I can talk you you know on everything so. i know you can talk man you no wonder you and kb like can talk you guys are both talkers well KB, <laughs> I, I i at least pause and let the other person like contribute to the conversation 
<laughs> that you know what actually uh, that question you asked me what like really what do i don't have patience for <laughs> yeah <laughs> other than kb he, he gets a, he gets a pass but people who don't let you talk like when you're talking it's it's crazy it's like they just go on and on and on and on and on and on and it's like oh do you want to say oh you do oh, you, you just... <laughs> okay. it's yeah, it, it happens that that it uh, happens. you know it's a conversation. So that's it's a collaboration when you have a conversation. Right, 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 and and that that really yeah that chaps my hide. Oh, it's just so it's once again, and then it's all about themselves. It's all yeah, you know. Yeah, there are some self you know. folks that that, yeah. that are out there in our business. It's life. It, yes, it happens. Um, it does. But yeah, man, anytime, anytime. Yes. You know. Thank you for being on guys. So you'll follow. I'll put Joey's info with this episode so you can follow him, see everything he's been up to, what he continues to be up to when he updates his website, you know, all that good stuff. That's uh, going to put fire under your ass now. Right, they're like, <laughs> what? Is he, is he going to update his, his, his he's his, like, boop, 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 boop. They're like, okay, let me get these these headshots from 2006 off of here now. <laughs> I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> so funny. Anyway. Oh, my God. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. You know, um, like, rate, subscribe. Any, I hate all that crap, but you know what? It keeps wow, us going. They should follow it keeps this us, podcast. It's funny. It's, 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 it's great. It's great. It's good. It keeps us connect. It keeps it being able to go. So, you know, I, I love us all being connected. So, Thank you, man, for being here. I'm happy Thank you got to catch me. up. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, and we'll do it again at some point. Maybe Wait. with KB. I'll never get a word in Edwards with you two, but, you know, we can do it. Uh, that'll, that'll be an interesting <laughs> dynamic. We love you, Caves. All right. yeah. We do love you, bro. We do love you. We love you. We do. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>